got a two heads of a coin here. Honorable and dishonorable mentions. Okay. The honorable mentions go to fake rappers on wrestling shows. That's the honorable the, one. Yes, okay. and the dishonorable goes to real rappers on wrestling shows. Because on, on one hand, in the same segment on Dynamite, we had Sanjay Dutt do a rap video that was fabulous. <laughs> Just fantastic. Uh, said there was some good nonsense this week. Yeah, that was some good nonsense. And then immediately after, the biggest boss, Rick Ross, one of everyone's most popular celebrity guests from the year, came back. And <laughs> now, if you told me that Rick Ross came back to Dynamite and dropped an F bomb on live television and that the segment was lame, I would not have believed you. And yet it happened. Yeah. See, okay. I'm going to give my opinion on that real quick. Okay. I thought Rick Ross was fine. I thought Keith Lee was fine. And I thought Swerve was fine. <laughs> but the goofs they imported for this situation kind of took the the wind out of the sails of this segment. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. For sure. Do you think that they were all pretty help. crappy in this? I what? thought here's what I thought. And like when you when you when you say it like that was was Swerve okay Swerve was fine was Keith okay Keith really didn't even do anything no he just so he so he was fine yeah he's, Rick he Ross, was fine <laughs> Rick yeah. Ross well he didn't screw he didn't make anything worse yeah no no he Rick didn't. Ross was fine in a vacuum it's just that he was operating on a completely different universe that everyone else was yeah that's true because, that's true and here's what I think happened. I think no one had any idea what was going to happen when like Tony, like Tony Schiavone didn't know because they, that's they the brought name of Rick Ross. podcast is what yeah. happened when, Oh, <laughs> but, right. oh yeah. So Tony, so it was Tony and Rick Ross. Right. And they like, like sent it to whatever was going to, Tony's like, like, well, I guess we're going to start with Keith. I don't know. Is Keith yeah. coming out? Yeah. And then it was like, Oh, it felt like 30 seconds before any music hit. Anything. Right. I know right. it was like three seconds. Right. But it was not smooth transition. Yeah. And then Keith comes out and then <laughs> Rick starts talking to try to introduce. Like, I think he was supposed to. I think maybe Rick was supposed to call him out. I don't know. Because then he handed the mic to Rick Ross and Rick Ross yeah. introduces the young legend Swerve. And then Swerve comes out with no music mm -hmm. and starts talking about. Keith Lee's timeline, or I'm not operating on your timeline. I'm going to come out yeah. when I want to, as if you don't want me to come out, even though everyone's asking you to come out. When Keith and is then, just standing And then there. before that, Rick no Ross control. Starts, yeah, Rick starts talking, and then he stops and just looks Keith up and down <laughs> and just says, you're a big oh. mother effer. You know what? When you said he dropped an F-bomb, mm -hmm. I literally couldn't remember when it was. Because yeah. I don't even think I registered that as an F bomb because yeah. it was it was such a funny <laughs> moment. And I genuinely loved that moment. Yeah. But it was maybe it was like one of only two moments right. that I really liked from that, which were that moment. Right. And of course, swerve stomping a, a cinder block yes. into Keith Lee's large belly. Yes. That was pretty which, awesome. That's something I had not seen in pro wrestling, mm -hmm. and it and it was a little not a major pop on my end. Like I didn't actually. If you were watching me, you might have assumed I was a dead, but right. inside I smiled at that. I like, <laughs> but that's really about it. Yeah, and we'll see what happens because that that is like that's one of those I could hear. That's one of those moments I can hear my inner Jeff Hawkins just complaining of like. <laughs> He just smashed a cinder block through this man's sternum. And like, where's the uh, like Keith Lee's been taken to the hospital? You know, where's the seriousness of like, oh, my gosh, he yeah. tried to murder him. It's kind of like when Swerve went all like uh, murder porn on um, Billy Gunn and was like breaking his fingers with pliers, you yeah. know, and just sort of like, haha, the next week, you know? Yeah. So we'll see how they handle it next week. You know, but the moment itself was pretty cool. 
Um, I like I like Swerve just being vicious and heal, but Parker Boudreaux and Grandin Getzman. You made that up right nope. there. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> no, you made that up. Not a dude situation. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude Busters? Is Trust that their Busters. Name? Dave and Busters. David Well, they're the former, you know, they are the, one of them is a former Trust Buster, so maybe Grant and Getzman is the dude, and they're the Dude Busters. I did like them as a team in that they're kind, their tattoos kind of match up, like they're the similar style. <laughs> yeah. They're both uh-huh. covered in them. Right. But beyond that, I'm just like, man, what are they doing here? Yeah. What are they doing? Like, Parker Boudreaux was what was his offense at the beginning of that? I'm trying to remember. Was it just big punches? He just kind of did like a big forearm and then just, yeah. Yeah. The forearms looked good. His face while delivering these forearms. Yeah. Oh man. He was doing like, that. He was, he was doing that wrestling school like overselling where he celebrates every strike. It was kind of like he was performing for the guy in the back of like Tiger Stadium, yeah, hundred thousand people. Yeah, when no, yeah. you don't need to. There's not, not hundred thousand right people now. here. No, right. no, you need to like sell this for you know three p three thousand people. That'll work. Yeah, and he right. was selling trying to do it for a hundred thousand. He it just looks he made so me silly. He made me think of like back when Tough Enough was on. Yeah, and like each week, and like this was the episode where like Young Parker got a talking to by. By visiting Coach <laughs> Triple H, of like you've got to make the people believe it. You've got to show me some intensity. Yeah, you know. And yeah. so then he just dials it up to twenty on the next time. Oh man, I, I yeah, do hope I don't know he, how to feel about it. I do hope he gets good, and he seems to be better than WWE thought he was because they released him like six months in, four months in. Right. He seems better than that, you know. Not yeah. to make fun of him too much, like he's he's okay as as like a really green guy. There are much greener people in AEW, I truly believe, to this day. Good Lord. This dog's... Hold on. Uh, <laughs> dog's licking my foot and it scared the living shit out of me, Kevin. <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> the, so right. you really enjoyed our... You, you really enjoyed the rap, huh? Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Sanjay, I loved it. I absolutely... I watched it again tonight before the show just to make sure... And I did. And just the video of like Sanjay with the with the T-shirt and doing the <laughs> doing the acclaimed hand signs and it was, uh, it was Jay great. Lethal like like, uh, you know, like stroking his beard. And yeah, <laughs> Jay's got a good, good beard stroke, by the way. Um, yeah. All right. Mogul affiliates. Is yeah. that is that shirt going to sell? Because I feel like that that one might sell. It might. I don't know if that shirt will sell, but the name, I bet if they come up with it, they need to get a real, I don't know if Swerve had anything to do with that design, but I think they need to let Swerve like run with it a bit. instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe that. (laughs) Hit Row, this is not so far. No, no, unfortunately not. 